does this push out your uh, you know in your experience does this push out the the perimenopausal stage or does it actually advance it how you know what what's the uh, what's the research on that with late pregnancy with late pregnancy uh, mm-hmm. yeah the effect is more on your body mm-hmm. on your physical health because see already with pregnancy as you know lochan there is a lot of emotional instability your body changes you have that stress going on. right yeah. then you have the menopause also you know coming on so it's like two things impacting you at the same time so it's like really mm-hmm. doubling you know uh mm-hmm. physical issues emotional issues so it's a lot mm-hmm. of stress that a mother has to take on when she's having a very late mm-hmm. pregnancy she has to handle mm-hmm. you know Uh, the uh, symptoms of men- perimenopause and also your you know postnatal prenatal all that comes along mm. with it mm. so it's almost like two things hitting you together yeah it just hits you coming <laughs> coming together yes <laughs> coming together so um, also does menopause like, affect a woman's parenting experience right how like how do you manage both simultaneously because you said that it does impact your emotional um and your cognitive ability a little bit um and therefore does that also impact how you parent does that change yes uh, absolutely um uh, it definitely does i think um more than when you, when a when a woman is in her menopause stage more than parenting children i think she's more like a support system because they are teenagers or they are young adults at that point most mostly if you take a look at it mm-hmm. uh so mm. what i always tell my clients is the three three main things you need to follow with the bond with the mm-hmm. children and you especially when you're going through menopause the first thing is have a open and transparent conversation with your children when mm. when i was a kid i know my mom was acting you know like a lot of mood swings were there and i was getting irritated with her i was in college mm. and you know i didn't know all these things were happening but i just wish my mother had sat and spoken to me so i is very important that you speak mm. to your family about what you're going through don't go mm. through it all alone already you start feeling very low you feel you're all alone no one mm. cares about you mm. because everyone's big they're doing their own thing so have a mm. conversation with your children or with your husband or you know your other members of your family saying telling them how you feel and what's happening to your body you know it's very it's a very very difficult stage i'm 50 right now and i'm going through menopause um and i know you know of course i've spoken to my husband about it so it's easier when you are transparent and there's a lot of communication happening between your children and you so they understand mm. and the uh, the second thing is focus on self care hmm and you have to make it a point to tell everyone in your home in your office wherever it is that your self care is priority start prioritizing that as women we don't do that we take care of everyone around us us except ourselves hmm hmm you know we get such joy in doing that and then finally i mean you know you if you are healthy only your family you can you can support your family if you're not it's very Absolutely. difficult yeah so i said the Absolutely. second thing you need to focus on is self care it has to be there every day of your life mm. and the third thing is mm. uh share responsibilities teach the kids to share responsibilities around the house you know break up the chores mm. everyone do mm. their little bit in the house otherwise this you know everything the woman has to get up ma i want water you get up and go and give water and you throw your things you mother has to come and put everything so start slowly training your child to take up small small responsibilities hmm you know hmm. and share it so there's less stress and less frustration because to hmm. a certain stage you're able to handle it once you start getting drained once you physically drained once you're getting those aches and pains once you feel those mood swings you just don't feel like you know going behind your kid or your your adult kids or your teenager kids and your husband and doing things around for them that's mm. when it mm. really gets out of control you know mm. and then uh, the the mom is idle she's she's like a monster right now 
<laughs> so teach your kids you know to do please help me out i'm going through this so let's let's all just you know as a family help out and do our little chores so i think communication yeah. helping uh, each other out and self care is very very important um so doris you spoke of, you know you said one of the critical things is self care for women right and i know you spoke about exercise and um you know diet etc but uh, what are the few things that women should keep in mind uh when they're thinking about self care especially when they're going through the perimenopausal and many menopausal phase and stage of uh their life so what are some things that they should definitely keep in mind the first important thing that they should keep in mind is sleep hygiene good night sleep mm-hmm. every day that is very very crucial and critical in helping release all the toxins from your body it helps build your body up you feel really rejuvenated and fresh the next day so a good night sleep is very very important so i you need to prioritize prioritize your sleep and make sure your your mm. uh, your bed is good you're sleeping on time there is no lights anywhere in the room you don't have your television on uh you're not browsing your phone at least 45 minutes before you go to sleep so that is very very important mm. so start preparing yourself winding down to get a good night sleep so that is important mm. and also yoga really helps it helps mm. with uh strengthening you physically it helps with releasing the stiffness a lot of stiffness is attributed to menopause and that's where the aches and pains start in your joints where it starts mm. pulling at your mm. joints yeah the stiffness that's created in your muscles your tendons and ligaments so yoga really releases all that stress and stiffness from your body and mm. also the breathing that starts happening during yoga helps calm you down calm the whole nervous mm. system down and meditation Mm. of course there are various types of meditation depending on the kind of person you are according to mm. ayurveda you are either very active person or you are a slow person <laughs> you know you have the vata type of body the pitta and the kapha so let's i mean just mm. giving you a brief so depending on your mental tra- temperament how you are that's the kind of meditation practice i uh, you know prescribe for my uh, clients so i think meditation mm. is important in the sense when i say self care take some time off for yourself take mm-hmm. that time to have a half an hour practice slow, you know with a group or alone just sit silently for few minutes gather yourself you know mm-hmm. start getting more centered take mm-hmm. deep breaths when there's a lot of anxiety happening mm-hmm. so th- those are the kind of things i'm trying of course your food plays a very very big role in how you feel it's mm. either you can you can have a satvik kind of meal or a rajasik kind of meal or a tamasik kind of meal yeah satvik is where you feel very light rajasik is where you are running around going crazy and tamasik is very inertia lazy lethargy mm. so try and eat foods which are satvik which will make you lighter which will make you feel better so this is what we mean by self care and you know uh meet a friend hang out with your friends uh go out socialize uh, have a meal with your friends uh, or your family go for a spa go you know spa treatment go for a massage mm. you know uh um, things like that small little things that uh, calm you down make you feel good about yourself mm. yeah mm so do all those aspects so, come under self care okay so sleep hygiene um exercise and specifically you know yoga for sure um breathing uh, as you know breathing exercises as, as often or even just allowing yourself 30 minutes of downtime where you're doing deep breaths and meditating based on what's right for you uh eating more nourishing food and and definitely finding or hanging out with people who aid your mental health and not <laughs> cause you stress yeah it yes. is also like a a simple uh self care uh, space and routine uh, to take care of and i do feel a lot of women have started to do that now they are yes. being very aware you know and they, uh like you said i think somewhere they 
you know who they were as a child probably comes out maybe all this while they were suppressing it or being a certain way but just around this time um they also start you know asking saying you know i mean more to i should mean more to the family or uh i uh you know i don't want to take this i uh, i am contributing a lot and there is that sudden um space of you know even confidence and self awareness that starts to come in a lot more uh, usually around this time and in the absence of that it it potentially can cause other kind of anxiety and mental health um so i also wanted to just understand so what what are the mental health repercussions of menopause especially from a long term perspective i know we touched upon it in in different men, you know in, throughout this conversation but if we were really to kind of sum that up to say what could be the different mental health repercussions uh of menopause especially when there is a shift in the cognitive uh uh you know ability there is there are emotional shifts that's happening there is uh increased anxiety potential depression so how does all of that play out on an overall mental health from a long term perspective in in see like i said when it's when it's very severe and it's long term that's when you know you are you are prone to dementia mm-hmm. you're prone prone to severe depression mm um where you have to start taking medication you need to start uh, going to uh, a psychiatrist or uh, you know for treatments so mm. uh you know and it's uh, what happens is you know your family is impacted with it mm your children your uh, your you know your parents or your husband and so and when there is so much of high anxiety also uh it's not good on your cardiovascular system yeah there's putting a lot of uh, pressure on your uh, physical you know uh, health as well where you if you will notice that even if you even if you google and check there's a lot of women during menopause who are prone to heart attacks hmm a very high blood pressure also happens at around that time when you don't you know uh, check the anxiety levels anxiety is very severe and you know around this time there is there are also a lot of broken marriages hmm you know yeah. where the, the fights are unbearable by the partners finally the husband says and also there's infidelity happens so the husband and you know another major 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 thing that we don't talk about openly during what's happening during menopause is low libido your sexual mm, drive i was just going to stops. ask that yeah hmm sorry i was going to ask that <laughs> yeah. okay so yes no one talks about it but i need when i when my clients come i just kind of probe about it so what happens is you are not when a woman is not interested in being sexually active and then the guy what does the guy do so that's where there's a lot of you know then he's attracted to someone else and then there is a lot of issues and trouble that starts stemming from that there's a lot of there are a lot of single moms if you see now who are in their middle age at 50 they are getting divorces some of them even in their 60s they are mm-hmm. getting divorces mainly between the range of 45 to 55 a lot of divorces mm-hmm. are happening mm-hmm. uh it's one is because the anxiety level is so much mood swings are so much uh, where the mm-hmm. woman starts you know there's a lot of his, his they get hysterical a lot of screaming and shouting there's a lot of fights the kids are fed up you know and Mm. the sad part is the woman is blamed mm. even the kids know they think oh it's, it's the mom mm. it's happened in my own family where the teenager mm. boy just thought it, it's all about his mom and he says i don't want to see you i hate you mm. but it's not her it's mm. it's she can't help it there's certain things happening to her she cries and she says i don't know what's happening to me uh mm. I, I am getting emotional here at this time because I feel very, 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 very sad when I hear you know women coming to me and saying I don't know what's happening to me, Doris. Mm. I I can't control it. What, what what am I supposed to do? Please help me. 
mm. you know and it's very sad that your teenage son or daughter suddenly turns around you and blames you that it's because of you that there's so much of unrest in the family there's so much of fights mm. it is it is it is a harsh truth but it's that's what that's what has been happening now so you know lo- long term prolonged emotional and mental issues if not mm. checked it mm. can lead to a break in your marriage it can lead to a a, 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 a halt in your career mm. you're so confused you the people don't want to work with you 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 could be thrown out of your job mm. because you're not able to handle the pressure that comes with the job as you climb the ladder it's getting more and more difficult you don't you know you're not able to travel you're not able to uh, have that connect with people mm. so and as you turn older this is what i'm saying like post menopause is when you start dim, uh, dementia starts setting in some women also start getting suicidal mm. oh yes it's uh, it's happened in my own family where your son turns around and says he doesn't even want to be in the same room as you the mother started getting suicidal mm. she had to go for deep depression she had to go for psychiatric treatment so it's it's there the elephant is there in the room but we need to acknowledge it we need to talk about it we need to educate uh, children we need to educate uh, the family other family members it's very very important yeah yeah absolutely and i think the part that you spoke about is saying being first being aware that these changes are happening in you and therefore uh all of this is um will have an impact on all your relationships around uh especially with your partner with your children uh because if you are going through mood swings if you experience uh lower sex you know libido or or a sexual desire and you know it will have an impact on how your relationship works with your partner and which it will have an impact on how that impacts your children and the other relationships as well um so you know from and and you you spoke about saying how it affects a woman and, and women come back and say i'm not sure what's happening to me and something's changing and and i was not like this i was not this angry person before or uh i was not this moody person before and so on does this also change their how they view themselves professionally like does this change their identity about themselves as well yes uh with some women yes definitely i think so because some women just put their hands up in the air and says you know what i just can't do this anymore i just mm. i just want to do something totally different mm. i i have uh, i have seen uh women who have who have worked in banks high ranking positions who have just couldn't cope with the pressure they couldn't cope uh and also this mm. fear of am i going to make a blunder am i going to make a mistake and this lady is mm. just slowly turned to teaching something she became a coach yeah she left her bank job and she became a coach so there there can be other i have known women who just start switching their careers to something more which is more passionate to them something which they they are they like they say that i have been doing a job for 25 years which i totally don't like i didn't like getting up and going to that job and now i think i'm done with it and i want to do something totally crazy i want to go and teach scuba diving or i want to go and teach yoga like what i did <laughs> i completely stopped my whole business and i said i am so passionate about teaching yoga and i want to help women and that's what i i want i want to do so i stopped that and i just took up this because i just every morning i get up and i and they're like my god you get up at 5 in the morning i'm like yeah i'm happy getting up 5 in the morning because i know i'm going to go and teach a yoga class at 6:30 mm-hmm. so i wouldn't be happy at 5 getting up to go to a factory to see my my you know something going wrong over there <laughs> you know yeah, so yeah when then the so there are a lot of switches and i've seen a homemakers who suddenly during this stage mid midlife they just say mm. i want to start doing a business i want to go and explore mm. doing some work 
I want to go and earn some money. They've never stepped into an office. They've never earned money. They've always been housewives. I'm like, great, do something. So they start painting. They sell their paintings uh, or they do candles. Whatever work it is, mm. it's something of their passion. It's some their creativity coming out. So mm. it either so it either either you just quit what you're doing and you do something which you like, or you are never done anything and you suddenly want to do something. So it it's it works it yeah. works both ways because the, you want to feel that self worth. You want people to mm. um, when you don't get appreciation somewhere. Uh, you just want to go somewhere where you, you know, you're appreciated, you're wanted, and things like that. Yeah. So you're you're absolutely right. I think you know that, and I more and more companies are now realizing it, and more and more people are talking about it. That there are two stages that uh, make women drop out of the workforce. One, of course, we all know is motherhood, because you know we as women are still expected. Are, are the primary caregivers in most parts of the world. And, and it's just uh, one of the things that gets very challenging to manage uh, a baby and a very, very thriving career. So they start to slow down. The second is also by the time, you know, they're touching 50, they're also menopausal. Like I said, they're also reaching senior leadership positions is when they say, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have this level of stress and anxiety and uh, or maybe, uh, you know, be this competitive, be this alpha, be this, you know, go-getter. I do want to do something which is always either a passion or an interest or something that I enjoy doing or, you know, choosing to be in a slower space. Uh, and it's also somewhere linked and triggered by the uh, hormonal or the life stage that they are at. And that's that's very interesting because today... Um, few, you know, people have started talking about it, saying that's a second phase because they, you know, the workspace, the workplace hasn't changed, but they have changed, and uh, how they are seeing themselves and their work has started to change as well. So, thank you. I think that was a very interesting perspective and point to bring out, and how how women also change their identities and and uh, look at work from a very different lens. Uh, whether you are whether you are a homemaker and today you want to do something else or you were doing something, but you want to do something else. So the career shifts and transitions start to happen also at this stage. Um, very interesting for bringing, bringing that up. Um, so my last question uh, to you, Doris, or rather it's more like something that I would like you to uh, share a bit more about the work that you're doing, as well as maybe like a, a simple advice or suggestion to any woman in, in I would say in the age group of 40 to 55, uh, potentially perimenopausal and or menopausal going through this journey, something that you would want to share with them um, on how they can improve their awareness about themselves, about what's happening, uh, as well as how you are working to, uh, you know, help more women in this space. So when I get a client on board, okay. I take them through uh, three steps or three stages. One is the discovery stage, discovering yourself or well, lighter foods. Hmm. So you, it, it really reduces all, all the symptoms by 80%. So this is what I teach them. So you, so one day you're active, one day you feel lethargic, one day you feel stiff, one day you feel heavy. So that's the way it is in menopause. And how do you, you know, have the knowledge to take care of yourself, what you need to do when, when, how you're feeling so that I educate them and teach them. And the advice I would like to give each and every woman is you are unique. Uh, you are a you beautiful being. Okay. It first stems from a being. Hmm. what you are as a pure being and everyone is beautiful hmm. and the next thing is please hmm. take care of yourself only if you take care of yourself can you take care of others around hmm. you give yourself that hmm. time of self-care which is very very important and if you're going to say a lot of women say this when they come to me ma'am I don't have time <laughs> That is the biggest lie that anyone can say. 
that I don't have time. Hmm. Well, you can make the time. I can teach you hmm. how to do that. Even if it is half an hour in a day, hmm. you can have the time for yourself hmm. and for your well-being. So don't lie to yourself and don't come up with excuses. Hmm. Start from today to take care of yourself hmm. and give yourself that priority and love yourself. Awesome! Thank you so, so much. So that's my message to this all was the women. Really, really. Uh, enlightening session on what are the different things and challenges and and we don't speak about it as much as we should uh this is a stage that you know i i i was talking to somebody and i was telling them that you know motherhood is not necessarily for every woman because they may may choose not to go down that path but menopause is for every woman she will go through it at what age she goes through it how she manages it and navigates it so we're literally talking to what 50% of the world's population is going to go through and nobody seems to be talking about it um so i i'm so glad that you are enabling and supporting more women going through this specific phase helping them understand themselves their bodies better what's happening and through that you know helping them lead more holistic and more fulfilling lives with their families with their friends uh you know with their ecosystem with people around them so thank you so much for this doris this was a really an amazing conversation and i'm so glad we could have this conversation and and bring some pieces forward some awareness as well to the fore thank you thank you so much uh, lotion for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my experiences yeah. uh, it's uh, it's been a beautiful sure. one hour thank i you. guess Uh, and uh, and thank you so much